The Adepti are projected as being the prominent and faithful servants of their Geo Archon, Rex Lapis, otherwise known as Morax, and also the God of Contracts, as well as being one of the first few original members of the Seven. It is also with him that the Adepti are bound by contract to defend and preserve the land of Liwa at all costs, including giving their own lives if they must. With such a serious and important job such as this requires immense levels of training and dedication, training that the members of the Adepti have dedicated their entire lives to. Hello everyone, I am Sakai Samurai, your guide in the vast world of Tavat, and today we are taking a look at the adorable Yao Yao, the newest and youngest member of the Adepti who has shown immense levels of talent and potential that not only that the Adepti have recognized, but the gods themselves. And so, without any more delay, let's dive into the world of Yao Yao. Her story begins in the quiet serenity of the mountain wilderness, with her parents only just recently moving away from the busy city life of Liwa, and instead they have took it upon themselves to seek a slower and calmer country life, setting up a small home just outside the Quincy village, being just far enough away from civilization to be rendered as living in seclusion at this point, where they would make do by trading in fruits that they would grow in their home garden to the neighboring village. It was here in this home that Yao Yao was born, and it didn't take long for her parents to quickly find something strange about their child. Even though she may have just been a small infant, she had already won over the hearts of any creature in the wilderness, whether it was just a small bird, a fish in a pond, or even a bear. They would approach Yao Yao as if they were lifetime friends. Yeah, imagine a grizzly bear wandering up to your child. It didn't take long for this to catch the attention of a wandering Adepti one day, with the woman in complete awe over Yao Yao's capabilities, immediately seeking the child to become her disciple in training. With that, her parents were afraid of what her daughter's life would be like if she were to go with the Adepti, scared of her safety and, and how she might react while being transferred from the mountains to the bustling big city of Liwa. However, it didn't take long, but just a little bit of the Adepti's smooth wordship to win over her parents, claiming that even though mountain life may be peaceful, it is also a very lonely experience, as well as seeking the question if the lonesome life of a farmer was really the right life for a little girl such as her, and instead of giving her the opportunity that she needs to meet the many faces of the world, especially as someone who's so capable of winning over companionship. It was with those words that the parents finally accepted her acquisition, and it is where Yao Yao would go on to train as the woman's apprentice, with that very same Adepti being the mysterious and powerful old woman we all know as Madame Ping. Yao Yao would go on to live her life in the city, seeing her parents only just a few times out of the year where she could be allowed to return home during festive holidays. With her new life, Yao Yao is almost constantly busy, training and learning at nearly all intervals during the day. During the mornings, she attends readings and educational lessons, with her afternoons are all centered around spirit training, and then finally, she is let loose after her training and is allowed to freely play and entertain herself. Now, playing may seem like a waste of time, especially someone who's trained to do the tasks such that are needed as an Adepti, but in reality, Madam Ping sees it as one of the most important foundations on maturing, allowing someone like Yao Yao to explore her vast potential and creativity and her compassion that she has for life, as well as to experience the many things in this world that books simply can never teach such as exploring the large ships docking in the Liwa Harbor, watching their sails move in the wind, or admiring the great map of Liwa in the Yujing Terrace, allowing her to help comprehend just how big this world truly is out there, or allowing her to make new friends, such as her very cherished friendship that she has created with Chi Chi. Madame Ping has a tremendous list of friends, especially with many prominent figures found about Liwa, with her often relaying the message to be careful with the little girl, and that if they were to run into her, that they should be mindful that her training is not yet complete, in the hopes that others will pass on some of their knowledge onto her as well, with one certain individual in particular taking that request to heart. 
With Yao Yao's loving and caring personality, it didn't take long for with Cloud Retainer to quickly find a great amount of fondness in the little girl. Taking it upon herself to craft her a gift that Yao Yao would go on to treasure in her life forever. She created a small little machine in the shape of a rabbit. As she handed the girl the gift, Cloud Retainer calmly spoke to her that if she was to find herself in any sort of danger at all, then all she would need to do was call upon it to protect her. Immediately, Yao Yao was in love with her new gift, naming the little plushie Yuji, and since that day, she has taken Yuji everywhere with her, never leaving her sight. It was after this that Cloud Retainer would go on to inform Madame Ping that the plushie has numerous functions, with one of that being a... Wait, a, a tracking locator? Inside this plushie contains a working tracking beacon, allowing Madame Ping to easily locate Yao Yao if she were to ever wander off or get lost. Yep, that's it everyone. Yao Yao is a full-on lease child with a Find My iPhone attached to her. Even though this may sound kind of, I don't know, creepy, Cloud Retainer with a straight face told the Adepti to only use this in the most critical of emergencies, stating that as Yao Yao would get older, she would not want her to worry about her privacy or to become distant from the old woman because of her never giving her the needed space that she would need so that she could flourish as a young adult. And so, with Yao Yao and her new best friend, she now sets out on her own adventures throughout Tivat, training and playing with other Adepti on a day-to-day -day basis. And while some days she may wake up with her head full of questions, such as, why was she chosen as an Adepti in the first place? Or, why has the gods blessed her with a vision? She would reflect and look back at the time that she met her master in the first place. As on that day, she was playing outside behind her family home, and as she normally would do, when she would have feelings or emotions built up within her, she would just speak to nature. She would have full-on conversations, just talking to the sky and to the rocks and the trees. And on this day, it was different. As she went outside and spoke to the clouds, she was overjoyed as the clouds seemed to respond back to her. It was then as she sat there and spoke to them and revealed her feelings and emotions that something magical happened. Before her very eyes, the clouds seemed to dissipated and the stones seemed to move. And there before her was her master. Her master revealing her true identity to her. And instead of being these simple objects, she was indeed a woman. It was Streetward Rambler, or as we also know her as Madame Ping. She would reveal that her destiny was indeed entwined with hers in some way, and that she could feel the connection with Yao Yao was so strong that they were destined to do great things together. At this time, and, and even now as she's gotten older, Yao Yao still doesn't truly understand what she meant that day. She may ask from time to time about the complexities of their relationship, about what she meant about her destiny, but Really, she doesn't understand it, and, and really, Madame Ping keeps saying simple and very vague. Perhaps maybe when Yao Yao gets older, that she can understand these complexities just a little bit better. She simply has not found these answers yet, and has found many days where she just wanders and finds herself looking off into the sunset, asking herself these many questions. With her biggest and strongest question being, why can't she just grow up faster? Still, she must find her way in this world. For better or for worse, she knows that one day these questions will all be revealed to her. And that was the story of Yao Yao, a little girl who has a destiny for greatness one day, and with not only the Adepti guiding her, but also the gods themselves. Anyways everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I do all sorts of Genshin Impact related content here on my channel, centering around lore, guides, and I also do the occasional parody video from time to time. If you enjoyed today's lore dive, consider subscribing, and let me know in the comments what you would like to see me do next. And as always, I'm Sakai Samurai, and I shall see you all in the next video.